Hey everybody, it's Captain Nabs, and I'd like to welcome you back to my Embraer E-175 tutorial series. We're up to part four. In the previous parts, we powered up the airplane, done a basic overhead flow, and set up our multifunction control and display unit, or our FMS. We're almost ready to get the airplane started. We have a few more flows to do, and then a checklist to read, and then we'll be just about ready. So let's hop in the flight deck and finish up the last of our pre-flight setup here. All right, we're back in the Embraer flight deck. In the last video, we left off setting up our MCDU for takeoff. So now we're going to do a couple more flows. We're going to flow through the glare shield panel, first of all, across the main panel, and then we're going to flow down the pedestal. So now that we're done with the MCDU setup, we're going to start with the glare shield flow from our left knee. We're going to start with the oxygen mask, which we would test to make sure that we can hear it, the oxygen flowing, and that we can also hear it through the loudspeakers. We'd move up to the reversionary panel here, make sure that our displays are in the auto position at 12 o'clock and that our sensor buttons are pushed in with no light displaying so that everything is in its normal default position. We come across the top of our glare shield, adjust our lighting as required, and then move up to the guidance panel. First of all, for the EFIS controls, make sure that you have set the current local altimeter setting, whatever it might be and you'll want to make sure that you are running in FMS mode so that the PFD is in FMS. If it was in VOR localizer for some reason, we go back to FMS for departure. We need to make sure that our guidance panel is set up for our departure. So we need to make sure that our speed, heading, and altitude are all set for our departure runway. Speed should be set to VFS, so 187. 187. Our altitude is normally set to our departure SID altitude, although if we haven't gotten a clearance, usually we go 100 feet below as a visual reminder that we haven't gotten our clearance. So the normal departure SID in Toronto is 5,000. I set 4,900 to remind me that I haven't gotten my IFR clearance from ATC yet. And last but not least, we do need to set our heading as well to the runway heading for departure, which in this case is 237. So there's 187, 237, 4900 feet set. And the other thing you do at this point is press the TOGA button, and that should bring up the flight directors. It should give you roll takeoff with LNAV armed. If you do not want to fly LNAV after departure because you're on a vector SID that needs you to maintain a specific heading, it's a good idea to disarm NAV now. Press the NAV button to disarm it, and you just end up with roll takeoff. Most of the time, this is how you're going to want to depart in the Embraer 175. Now that we've set up our guidance panel correctly, we'll move across our screens, make sure we have no flags on our PFD, make sure that our map is configured how we like it with whatever options on that we do have. Take away airports because airports is a little bit much sometimes. And then normally the left side screen is left on the flight control system page. This way, after the engines are started, when we're doing our flight control check, the flight controls will appear right here. We'll check to make sure our IESS is aligned. All the indications are correct with the current field elevation, with our basic altimeter setting, and uh, airspeed is zero. Heading matches, everything matches what it should right here. We'll set the auto brake to RTO. Make sure the parking brake light is on if we have the parking brake on. Check the ICAS display for any messages that shouldn't be there. Steer off is a very normal message before we started moving. We'll check our clock to make sure that the timer is not counting anything we don't need it to. And on the bottom here is the elapsed time for our flight. As soon as we lift off, it should start automatically counting. If there's a time left over from the previous flight, just make sure you press the reset button at least once to reset that to zero time so it starts counting our next flight. Obviously, the landing gear should be down, the ELT should be armed, and we shouldn't have our ground proximity terrain inhibit. Uh, ground proximity glide slope inhibit or landing gear warning inhibit buttons pushed in or illuminated at this point in time. We're going to move down the center of the pedestal, make sure that all of our flight control mode buttons are out with no lights. Make sure our stall warning cutouts are out with no lights. Our, stops, our start stop selectors should be in the stop position. Our engine ignition switches should be in the auto position so they will start running as soon as we start the engines. Then we're going to move across the center part of the pedestal here, so make sure our speed brake is closed, our thrust levers are idle, our ICAST full button should be out with the light off, our RAT manual deploy needs to be stowed, our ground proximity flap override switch should be guarded out and no light, our flap should be zero at this point in time, our radio control panels should be set how we like them, and then we'll test our trims. So using the elevator switch, press and hold 
in either direction and you should see it stop after about three seconds and you should also hear an oral alert trim 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 which will be available in a future version when you've tested it in one direction test it the other direction and again make sure it stops after three seconds it should go right back to where it started in the real aircraft you'll do the same thing with the pitch backup switch as well press and hold it three seconds make sure it stops and vice versa you'll do the same thing with the roll and the yaw trim press them in one direction hold them and they should stop after three seconds and then in the other direction as well press and hold for three seconds and it should stop and you'll see the roll went right back to center again make sure the roll disconnect and pitch disconnect levers are pushed all the way in and we are now complete our cockpit setup of the Embraer 175. At this point, you would normally give your fellow pilot a takeoff briefing, and then when the takeoff briefing is complete, you'll commence with the before start checklist down to the line. So let's do the before start checklist down to the line, assuming that the briefing was done. And you can only do this when you're done fueling because we need to turn the fastened seatbelts on as the first step. If the fueling's not done, we don't do this checklist until it's done. Before start checklist, past your signs panel, set with the fasten seatbelt sign on. Pressurization panel, make sure most importantly that the mode is in auto, the dump switch is out and guarded. Oxygen masks, checked, checked. Flight instruments, cross checked. Thrust levers, idle. Fuel quantity, We'll say 10,000 pounds is required in our flight plan and 10,210 is on board. And MCDU is set. Before start checklist down to the line complete. And that's it. Our flight deck setup is complete and we're basically ready to go flying. All that's left is to finish the before start checklist below the line. Once the tug is connected, the bridge is away, the passengers are all on board and we're ready to go. So for our next video, we'll go through the end of the before start checklist, engine start and taxi out in the Embraer E-175. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you're having fun with this airplane.